In our politics lead today, President Trump today condemning racism, bigotry, and white supremacy, though he made no acknowledgment of his own rhetoric, which even former White House staffers and Republican members of Congress have called racist or racially divisive. This after two mass shootings left 31 people dead, a death count that grew today by two. A source telling CNN that the president has also ordered his team to come up with possible proposals, a few of which he laid out in his speech earlier today. But after suggesting background checks for gun purchases may be a solution, in a tweet, the president stayed away from any mention of gun laws in his spoken remarks today and instead focused on this. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. CNN's Boris Sanchez picks up our coverage now from the White House. President Trump with his first significant remarks following this weekend's two mass shootings. These barbaric slaughters are an assault upon our communities, an attack upon our nation, and a crime against all of humanity. Reading from a teleprompter, Trump zeroed in on the El Paso suspected gunman's alleged motive, outlined in a racist anti-immigrant screed posted online moments before the attack. The shooter in El Paso posted a manifesto online consumed by racist hate. But the president failed to mention the accused shooter mirroring some of his own language about immigrants. This is an invasion. That's an invasion. Invasion. We have a country that's being invaded. The president's use of invasion on camera and in tweets echoed in the alleged gunman's manifesto, where he refers to a Hispanic invasion, despite him writing that Trump didn't originally inspire his views. Our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Trump's speech also laid out several policy ideas to address mass shootings, but didn't mention gun control measures like background checks, a noticeable change from his tweet just a couple of hours before when he wrote that Congress should pass strong background checks, perhaps marrying them with desperately needed immigration reform. Instead, Trump on camera repeating Republican talking points, tying mass shootings to social media, mental health issues, and violent video games. Mental illness and hatred pulls the trigger, not the gun. And advocating for the death penalty and so-called red flag laws. We must make sure that those judged to pose a grave risk to public safety do not have access to firearms. Jake, the National Rifle Association put out a statement praising President Trump's remarks, saying that they welcome the president's call to address the root causes of the horrific acts of violence that have occurred in our country. No mention in this statement of the background checks that President Trump alluded to in those tweets, but failed to mention in his speech, Jake. All right, Boris Sanchez at the White House for us. Thanks so much. So let's chew over all this. And Alexander, let me start with you because President Obama uh, just gave what I think it's fair to call a fairly pointed, even if he didn't go after Trump by name, a statement. Let me just read part of it. We should soundly reject language coming out of the mouths of any of our leaders that feeds a climate of fear and hatred or normalizes racist sentiments. Leaders who demonize those who don't look like us or suggest that other people, including immigrants, threaten our way of life. Um, at this point, why not mention President Trump if that's who it's aimed at? I mean, I, I would agree. I think President Obama is trying to toe the line of, like, you know, making sure that we're uniting the country because it's a really in incredibly scary time right now. Uh, I don't think anyone, as much as they want to say thoughts and prayers or whatever, has an answer because the reality is is that politicians on both sides have really failed the American people, right? We have not adequately solved gun violence in this country. Uh, and so I think it's important to, to name what needs to be named but also highlight that America does not have a monopoly on racism and sexism and bigotry, uh, but what we do and, and what is unique about the United States from the rest of the world is our access and ability to have just so many weapons of, of warfare that are, you know, in American hands and on the mm -hmm. street. So I think, you know, Barack Obama was again trying to toe that line of inspiring people, but also needing to, you know, condemn and say what needs to be done. And uh, Bill, um, a new Washington Post op-ed says this quote, you can't be mourner in chief or healer in chief when you've spent your entire political career stoking the hate and championing the white supremacy, you now decry. Obviously, uh, they don't think that President Trump, in their view, can fill the role that people want a president to fill. Yeah, I think we're long past him filling that role. I mean, I suppose if he had actually taken some responsibility, didn't have to be exclusive responsibility, but it said, you know, a lot of us have said things 
we now, at this moment especially, that we regret. I have too. He doesn't have to say he's the only one. He can leave it somewhat vague. But he had to take some kind of personal responsibility after his performance over years, obviously pre-presidential and presidential, but especially the last few weeks, which has just been a torrent of abuse of, you know, send them back and uh, Elijah Cummings in Baltimore, and then, you know, gloating about the robbery of Congress, Representative Cummings' house and then everything else. I mean, so, it, yeah, it makes it, I think his speech was perfunctory. President Obama's statement was awfully good. You know, I voted against him twice, and I don't regret that. I would have preferred John McCain and Mitt Romney's policies, but that was a presidential statement. We're not going to get that kind of presidential statement or leadership, I think, from this president, which does make it important for others to act, I do think, or mm -hmm. others to step forward and speak. I do think, actually, there's a case for Congress coming back. Uh, maybe the Senate won't pass these different gun control proposals. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's enough for Nancy Pelosi simply to say the Senate should come back. Maybe the House could come back, too, and they could both do a little bit of try attempted governing, at least, at this moment when the country yeah. needs to see some responsible behavior from, from, from elected and officials. I, I will say that there's H.R. 8, which is literally sitting on McConnell's yeah. desk. Right. We're going to talk about that later in the show. <laughs> so, but, but hold your horses on that. But, yeah. but on the reaction, and you mentioned President Obama's comments, which I think were, were very good, very appropriate. but. I think he struck a tone that some Democratic candidates didn't. When you hear uh, Beto O'Rourke or a uh, Cory Booker really going after the press and basically saying he's racist and he's encouraging and inspiring this type of uh, acts of violence, I think that's just preposterous and irresponsible. Look, I've been critical of the president's comments in the past. I don't think they help create an environment of, uh, of consensus of, 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 of an environment that is constructive. But there's a lot of hate, unfortunately, uh, on both sides. Now, the president is the president. He's the, the head of state, head of government. Uh, he has a responsibility. He's made some statements in the past that, that have been offensive. But to call him, you know, a white nationalist and that, that he is responsible for mm -hmm. this, I think it's totally irresponsible. And I think it's too early to make that type of comment. I don't, I think it might be unproductive. I don't think it's, it's, I don't think they're off. Uh, we've talked about this before. White nationalists identify him as white nationalists. Now, is it productive? No. But is it the time to do it, even? That it, it's always a time to call out what needs to be called out. I think um, trying to whitewash it or, or sweep it under the, the rug is uh, not helping either. Uh, the, the problem is, um, as Tupac says, Trump is a, a reflection of his community. There are too many people who believe as he does. Uh, there are too many people who are not willing to step up for gun reform. Um, the NRA doesn't have power just because of money. The NRA has power because it has voters right. who are not convinced that any of the things that you talk about both parties have failed, that any of the things uh, that are in the House and the Senate are the answers to the problems of gun violence.